The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission is investigating top officials at the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA, in relation to a controversial 7.7 .7 billion Kenya shilling tender for the emergency procurement of COVID-19 personal protective equipment that was to be delivered by the 22nd of this month. EACC is concerned that the tender was hurriedly awarded to a company known as Kilig Limited, using direct procurement under the cover of emergency needs, despite the fact that they were given three months to supply as opposed to one month. KEMSA Board Chair Senator Kembi uh, Gitura says even though the investigations are yet to be concluded, any of the top officials charged will have to step aside if it gets to that point. Let's get more details now from Sam Gituku. When the coronavirus pandemic reached the country on the 13th of March, many agencies and Kenyans went into overdrive to achieve preparedness to handle the outbreak. The Kenya Medical Supplies Authority being the sole agency, mandated to procure essential medical commodities for government facilities, hurriedly sought to procure what they term health products and technologies whose details are complete PPE kits comprising overall goggles, masks, boots and gloves. While this was a noble initiative, it is the details that are alarming. Here is a tender valued at 7.7 .7 billion shillings. As per KEMSA's approved budget, only 4.7 billion shillings should have gone into the procurement meaning the commitment letters issued by KEMSA exceeded budget by 3 billion shillings. The tender was for procurement of 150,000 kits, each valued at 9,000 shillings. Kilig Limited was identified through direct procurement. Questions now raised why direct procurement was chosen for such an expensive tender. In a letter signed by KEMSA CEO Dr. Jonah Manjari Mwangi, Kilig was granted three months to deliver the supplies. Cancer Procurement Director Charles Juma wrote to his CEO in April and June raising questions why Kilig was chosen in direct procurement for a tender that should essentially be open to competition given its size. Juma in his June letter stating that at the time of the procurement, the authority already had stocks of up to 160,000 kits, while more than 200,000 more were expected to be delivered. Juma raising questions why there was an urgency to procure 450,000 more with an excuse of emergency, yet three months were allowed for delivery. Juma observed that direct procurement was unnecessary and that the tender to Kilig should have been revoked. Juma's letter pointing to a reality that commitment letters were being issued by KEMSA to prospective suppliers against recommended procurement procedure. The procurement director advised the CEO to stop further evaluation of any samples presented by prospective suppliers as doing so was giving the false impression that KEMSA was still involved in emergency procurement of COVID-19 response equipment. And now ESCC has asked for documentary evidence around the award of the tender to Kilig Limited. Some of the documents sought by ESCC are tender advertisement notices, bids submitted by bidders, tender opening minutes and list of all bidders. ESCC also wants copies of the professional opinion of the procurement and contractor agreements. Already seven senior officials at KEMSA have been questioned by ESCC. I know that virtually all the executive directors of KEMSA have been called to ESCC to record statements. I do not wish to preempt that. I do not know what it is that they are being asked. I have not discussed it with them. But once the, in the, once the investigations are complete and the ESCC decides what they want to do with those investigations, I'm sure they shall involve me as the chairman of the board and uh, the, the, maybe the board of directors of KEMSA so that we can then be able to, make, to, to have an opinion and know exactly what has been going on. Principal Secretary Susan Mochache had written to KEMSA CEO John Manjari communicating an audit of procurement made on behalf of the ministry relating to COVID-19 whose payments are to be made using World Bank funds. The outcome of the audit is not yet known, with the KEMSA board chair promising action should there be culpability of the authorities' officials. If they are charged, they will step aside. The investigation could very well find that no offence no, no offense is suspected to have been uh, committed. That would be the end of the matter. The files will be closed. But should they find that uh, Officer X has done something outside their mandate or they have uh, been involved in corrupt practices and they are charged in courts of law. I mean, if, if, the, if the requirement is that they should step aside pending the outcome of the case, then that should happen. Sam Gitikos, TV, Nairobi.